Carl Jung approached the unknown depths of his mind and entered a world riddled in paradox. He understood he must develop his ego, his I, to have new eyes to begin to see into the depths of consciousness. His one-sided and judgmental awareness has distorted his conscious perception of reality. Ultimately, it led him away from his self. As he explored the dark side, the unconscious, he noticed how the spirit of the times has led him to live a life of illusion. His consciousness was fixed, outside, and on the surface. To loosen this worldly binding and return to his soul, Jung was led through dreams, ancient myths, symbols, parables, metaphors, and the like. The enigmatic depths. Another such enigma is a riddle. These riddles led Jung to an inner dance with his self towards higher levels of awareness. A dance towards wholeness, which unfortunately in our modern mechanical world has lost its rhythm. The ego is missing its partner and became highly focused on the mechanics. We have been trained, especially in Western education, to notice and memorize parts. We see in black and white losing the essence and color that underlies its meaning. You see, it takes more than the intellect to grasp the nature of a riddle. It requires, as Jung would say, a bit of magic. Solving a riddle, just like interpreting a dream, is a powerful mental activity for an individual to mature their consciousness to see beyond the mere illusions. Ultimately, riddles seek beyond the known and cracks the ego open to begin to truly see its whole self. A riddle is a great analogy to life, that being chaos with a secret underlying order. They are ingrained in the enigmatic language of the unconscious. Riddles keep you open, curious, and searching. They are truly an antidote for our concrete and closed times. So let's join Jung in the Red Book chapter titled, The Gift of Magic, as he speaks on the nature of riddles before providing us a riddle to incubate within. The Gift of Magic Jung has just received a magical rod from his soul and is beginning to understand the nature of magic, or of inner magic. He asks his soul, who gives me the black rod? in which his soul replies, The darkness that lies before you, it is the next thing that comes to you. Will you accept it and offer it your sacrifice? Jung accepts and offers the sacrifice that is required of both giving and receiving solace. Yet through this he finds the rod brings an unbearable tension. His soul tells him to keep his eyes and ears open. Jung concludes the entry on January 23rd, 1914, proclaiming, I bow, my soul, before unknown forces. The black iron in my heart gives me secret power. We see here Jung is being taught by his soul, his self, to open up to the depths without his personal opinions, beliefs, and wants blurring the way. The ego or his eye is being cracked open by this sacrifice of solace to allow what is to be known. To be open to the depths, one must bear its opposites, both good and evil, light and dark. Hence that tension that Jung proclaims the black rod brings with it. In the second layer of this chapter, as Jung reflects on what just occurred with his soul or his self, he states, the gifts of darkness are full of riddles. The way is open to whomever can continue in spite of riddles. Submit yourself to the riddles and the thoroughly incomprehensible. There are dizzying bridges all over the eternally deep abyss, but follow the riddles. As said in the introduction, riddles can provide a path for conscious development. They are the way, Jung says that is open for anyone who can continue through them. Endure them, the terrible ones. Protect the riddles. Bear them in your heart. Warm them. Be pregnant with them. Thus, you carry the future. Jung is pointing to the fact that the riddles of life, whether they occur within or without, 
are necessary for your path of self-knowledge and consciousness, and he is not directing us to hurry and solve them. Rather, bear them in our hearts, impregnate them within, and incubate the riddles to allow its birth of meaning. Hence, a building of inner openness in that dance with oneself. Another analogy to use with your relationship to the riddle is cultivating a plant. From the seed, the riddle, if tended, it will grow and bear its conscious fruits. Again, it requires an eye to hold those opposites in tension and a help from that other inner awareness to help lead you forward. On this, Jung says in the second layer, running away is deception and detour. Shut your eyes so that you do not see the manifold, the outwardly plural, the tearing away and the tempting. There is only one way, and that is your way. There is only one salvation, and that is your salvation. He continues, Great is the power of the way. The power of the way is so great that it carries away others and ignites them. You do not know how this happens. Hence, it is best you call this effect magical. In it, heaven and hell grow together. And in it, the power of the below and the power of the above unite. So our egos should be open to the mysteries, the riddles that arise within and outside in order to truly walk its path of individuation. While we have our own riddles that arise, Jung provides a riddle to conclude this chapter to help one open up to this great and magical way. Listen. The above is powerful. The below is powerful. Twofold power is in the one. North, come hither. West, snuggle up. East, flow upward. South, spill over. The winds in between bind the cross. The poles are united by the intermediate poles in between. Steps lead from above to below. Boiling water bubbles in cauldrons. Red hot ash envelops the round floor. Night sinks blue and deep from above. Earth rises black from below. A solitary is cooking up healing potions. He makes offering to the four winds. He greets the stars and touches the earth. He holds something luminous in his hand. Flowers spread around him, and the bliss of a new spring kisses all his limbs. Birds fly around, and the shy animals of the forest gaze at him. He is far away from men, yet the threads of their fate pass through his hands. May your intercession be meant for him, so that his medicine grows ripe and strong and brings healing to the deepest wounds. For your sake, he is solitary and waits alone between heaven and earth for the earth to rise up to him and for heaven to come down to him. All peoples are still far off and stand behind the wall of darkness, but I hear his words, which reach me from afar. He has chosen a poor scribe, someone hard of hearing, who also stutters when he writes. I do not recognize him, the solitary. What is he saying? He says, I suffer fear and distress for the sake of man. I dug up old ruins and magical sayings for words never reach men. Words have become shadows. Therefore, I took old magical apparatuses and prepared hot potions and mixed in secret and ancient powers, things that even the cleverest would not guess at. I stewed the roots of all human thought and deeds. I watched over the cauldrons through many starry nights. The brew ferments forever. I need your intercession, your kneeling, your desperation, and your patience. I need your ultimate and highest longing, your purest willing, your most humble subjugation. Solitary, who are you waiting for? Whose help do you require? There is none who can rush to your aid, since all look to you and wait for your healing art. We are all utterly incapable and need help more than you. Grant us help 
so that we can help you in return. The solitary speaks. Will no one stand by me in this need? Should I leave my work to help you so that you can help me again? But how should I help you if my brew has not grown ripe and strong? It was supposed to help you. What do you hope from me? Come to us. Why are you standing there cooking up marvels? What can your healing and magical potion do for us? Do you believe in healing potions? Look at life. Behold how much it needs you. The solitary speaks. Fools, can you not keep watch with me for an hour until the difficult and long-lasting achieves completion and the juice has ripened? Just a little longer and fermentation will be complete. Why can't you wait? Why should your impatience destroy the highest opus? What highest opus? We are not alive. Cold and numbness has seized us. Your opus, solitary one, will not be finished for aeons, even if it advances day after day. The work of salvation is endless. Why do you want to wait for the end of this work? Even if your waiting turns you into stone for endless ages, you could not endure till the end. And if your salvation came to its end, you would have to be saved from your salvation again. The solitary speaks. What smooth-tongued lamentation reaches my ears? What whining? What foolish doubters you are? Unruly children. Persevere. It will be accomplished after this night. We will not wait a single night longer. We have persevered long enough. Are you a god that a thousand nights are as one night to you? For us, this one night would be like a thousand nights. Abandon the work of salvation and we will be saved. What stretch of ages are you saving us for? The solitary speaks. You embarrassing human swarm. You foolish bastard of God and cattle. I am still lacking a piece of your precious flesh for my mixture. Am I truly your most valuable piece of meat? Is it worth my while to come to the boil for you? One let himself be nailed to the cross for you. One is truly enough. He blocks my way. Therefore, neither will I walk on his ways, nor make for you any healing brew or immortal blood potion. But rather, I will abandon the potion and the cauldron and occult work for your sake, since you could neither wait for nor endure the fulfillment. I throw down your intercessions, your genuflection, your invocations. You could save yourself from both your lack of salvation and your salvation. Your worth rose quite high enough because one died for you. Now prove your worth by each living for himself. My God, how difficult is it to leave a work unfinished for the sake of men? But for the sake of men, I abstain from being a savior. Lo, now my potion has completed its fermentation. I did not mix a piece of myself into the drink, but I did slice a piece of humanity. And behold, it clarified the murky foaming potion. How sweet, how bitter it tastes. The below is weak, the above is weak. The form of the one becomes double. North, rise up and be gone. West, retire to your place. East, spread yourself. South, die down. The winds in between loosen the crucified. The far poles are separated by the poles in between. The levels are broadways, patient streets. The bubbling pot grows cold. The ash turns gray beneath its ground. Night covers the sky, and far below lies the black earth. Day approaches, and above the clouds a distant sun. No solitary cooks healing potions. The four winds blow and laugh at their bounty, and he mocks the four winds. He has seen the stars and touched the earth. Therefore his hands clasp something luminous, and his shadow has grown to heaven.
A riddle is defined as an ancient verbal, poetic, or literary form in which, rather than a rhyme scheme, there are parallel opposing expressions with a hidden meaning. Now, if we look back at that previous text from the Red Book, one should notice the riddle. In the beginning, the above and below were powerful, and at the end, they're reversed and weak. Similarly, the four winds meet each other in the center, united in the beginning. And then at the end, they separate and they're apart. It is clear that this is a riddle and a hidden meaning is awaiting fulfillment. If anyone truly understands the power of a riddle, you never give it solution. This is the magic of the riddle and the purpose of its teaching. It, or you could say the self, provides the solution or solutions. So I will respect myself, Jung, in your own unconscious, and leave this for you to warm in your own hearts and incubate. Jung placed this riddle here for you to find, not for me to tell. What I can say, though, after my own incubation over long nights with it, is I realized how powerful and alive a riddle may be. For one, it makes you think and rethink, and then stop thinking to allow it to think. It also allows you to see where your inner projections and judgments are at certain items. For example, I originally had preconceptions that were later adjusted. It's a humbling process to the ego, and it allows to build that inner trust to know that there is more than its own limited scope. It also allows our busy and oversensitive minds to be able to slow and be patient. Lastly, unconsciously, different sections and revelations of this riddle would randomly arise, leading to new insights and awareness. In all, you want to approach this riddle, or any riddle as you would a dream. You begin with the unknown whole, then you get into its parts, and finally you allow the whole to come back together for its meaning to arise. This is that dance between the ego and self, or if one is familiar with the dual hemispheres of the brain, of the left and right hemispheres. If you go into this practice with openness and patience, you'll notice the riddle begin to reveal itself. On the other hand, if you go into it trying to solve the riddle, trying to be first, or taking it too literally, you will end up riddling yourself into another illusion. It truly requires a new awareness one that is not found widely in society today. On finding a solution, I'll provide a final quote from Jung. Often, it is necessary to clarify a vague content by giving it a visible form. This can be done by drawing, painting, or modeling. Often, the hands know how to solve a riddle with which the intellect has wrestled in vain. So take time and be patient with this Red Book riddle, the other various riddles throughout this rather magical book, and the multitude of riddles that approach your consciousness throughout life. They may show up within a fear, a standstill in a relationship, or in an inner dream or thought. But this is the road of individuation, a road riddled with enigmas. Don't lose sight of their purpose and power. And to conclude, I'll leave you with this. If you are unaware of your own riddles, of your own unconscious, another person, a government, a business, or the like, may riddle your consciousness into its own liking. So with that, happy riddling, and as always, stay humble.